morning, New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. Once again, God has allowed us to come together on this beautiful first Sunday in May. This is a good time to just give God all the praise and all the honor that's due his name. We are so excited that he's allowed our lives to just keep on rolling. Um, our scripture today comes from Ephesians 2. 4 through 10, and it reads, For God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up together, and made us sit in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that at the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Y'all, we have nothing to boast about. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. That's Ephesians 2, 4 through 10. Our song this morning is Amazing Grace, because we know that if it had not been for God's amazing grace, we don't know where we would be on this day, God. We would be doomed, y'all. The song says, amazing grace, how sweet that sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see amazing grace. this far. It's because of God's grace that we are who we are. We are where we are. It's because of God's amazing grace that we've been blessed again to come before his presence and I'm glad about it. God has blessed us to come one more time before him. And it's not because of who we are or what we have done, 
is because of God's amazing grace. God has blessed us again to be a part of his amazing grace. And for that we are thankful, for that we are joyous. We thank God for the privilege of his amazing grace. He has blessed us once again. Let us go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. God, we thank you, Father God, for blessing us and keeping us. We thank you, Father, for another privilege, another chance, another opportunity to come before you. Lord, we realize that it's because of your amazing grace that we have another chance. It's because of your amazing grace that we are able to lift our voices and sing to you. It's because of your amazing grace that you've given us a chance again, Lord, to come before you in prayer. It's because of your grace. Because we don't deserve it. Because, Father God, we, we have not done anything to get it. But it's your amazing grace that has, has blessed us one more again. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for keeping us and blessing us. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us in our going. Bless us as we study your word. Bless us in our daily walk. And now, Lord, we ask you to bless us along the airways, Father God. That your word will go forth. That victory will be won. That Satan will be on the run. And that we will honor you in all that we do. We thank you now. We pray that you bless the word to go forth. And men, women, boys, and girls will hear you and see you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And thank God. Let me tell you, it's because of God's grace. God's amazing grace that we've come one more time to celebrate him. God has blessed us one more time to celebrate him. And we're glad about it. We're just so glad that God has given us another chance to come to the church. Amen. We thank God that the church is meeting at the church. Amen. Thank you for gathering with us again at our remote location, the New Beginning Church remote location. Thank you so much for gathering, gathering with us. And we thank God for another privilege of being here on planet Earth to celebrate the goodness of of God himself. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We thank God for the privilege of celebrating him. Amen. Well, we're looking at our Bibles now in the New Testament. We're looking at Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. The book is St. Luke. The chapter is 22. Luke chapter 22. And the verses are 19 and 20. Luke chapter 22 verses 19 and and 20. In the New Testament, the book is St. Luke, chapter 22, the verses are 19 and 20. When you found it, you will discover these words. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup at the supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, this which is shed for you. I want to talk about the, the, the substitutionary image. The substitutionary image. The substitutionary image. The substitutionary image. Let me just tell you. Sometimes we need a substitute. Sometimes we need things or people, and in this case, people who will take our place. Jesus did that. I'm reminded of a story that was told that a group of soldiers had gathered on the beach, taking time away from their their military duties to have fun on the 4th of July. These young men and young women gathered on the beach. They were playing in the water. They were spending time there. They were talking about old times. They were talking about military duties and they were talking about family and sharing stories about friends. All of a sudden, an enemy threw a hand grenade onto the beach. About 50 soldiers were gathered there. 
this hand grenade was strategically thrown to kill off about 50 soldiers. Certainly had this grenade blown, it would have killed off all of them at one time. But one soldier, realizing that everybody would be taken out with one hand grenade, he took a running start, threw his body upon the grenade, smothered out the blast. The grenade blew him into many pieces, but all the lives of everybody else were saved. He became the substitute, and he died for everybody that day. This soldier was not able to receive a purple heart. This soldier sacrificed his entire life for many. This soldier became the substitute he became the substitutionary image to save all of mankind on that beach that day. Could have been you. Would you have been willing to sacrifice your life for others, many you knew and many you did not know? Many who were not kin to you. Many who were not those who supported your growing up. But this soldier had the audacity to go ahead and substitute his body for the body of so many. He gave up his life that day. He died. He took on the ultimate sacrifice that day for so many others to live. Well, that was a physical death so that physical lives would live. So that physical lives would continue to roll on. So that many would live because one had died. When we look at the text, it's not a physical death for physical deaths. But it is a spiritual death for physical death. Yes, Jesus died in the physical in order to buy our pardon in the spiritual. Yes, it's not the comparison of physically dying for physical redemption. But it is the comparison of spiritual death. A physical death for a spiritual redemption. You see, man was on their way to hell. Man was dying a physical death, but they were also dying a spiritual death. Because Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, because Adam and Eve passed their bloodline down to us, we were on our way to hell. But when we look at the text, we find Jesus at what is known as the Lord's Supper. What is known as the Last Supper. What is known as the last meal before Jesus was sacrificed for you and for me. Matthew records that he gave his blood for the remission of our sin. Here, Dr. Luke says that he took bread he gave thanks and he broke it. Jesus sets a pattern for us. Regardless of what we eat, regardless of how we eat, we ought to give thanks before we eat. He said, the text says that, that Jesus took the bread. He thanked God for it. He thanked God for the privilege of having it. He blessed it. He thanked God for it. He gave thanks. We ought to be willing to give thanks for what God is doing in our lives. We ought to be willing to give thanks to God because God is the one who's keeping us. 
I would not, I would not, I would not tell you to, to eat anything, to drink anything, or to partake of anything without asking God's blessings upon it first. The text says, verse number 19, Luke 22, verse number 19 says, and he took bread and gave thanks. After he gave thanks, he broke it and gave it to them. Now the them here are his disciples. The them here are those who believe Jesus Christ. The them here are those who walked with him. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples. Now, by now, they're known as the apostles of Jesus Christ. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples. And when he gave it to his disciples, he said to them, this is my body. He broke the bread. Now, Jesus was sitting in their presence. His body was present with them. But the text declares that Jesus says, this is my body. So it becomes a substitutionary image. It becomes an image that, that Luke paints in our minds that Jesus is on his way to Calvary. Jesus is about to sacrifice himself. He's about to sacrifice his body for your life and for mine. The text says, Jesus is speaking, and Jesus says, this is my body which is given for you. Just like that soldier on the beach that day gave his physical life to save the physical lives of his comrades. Jesus is saying he's going to give up his physical life to save, to save the spiritual lives of all of us. Jesus has a way of blessing us regardless of who we are. Jesus has a way of keeping us even when we can't keep ourselves. And let me just share with you, in the midst of this COVID-19 era, Jesus is keeping us in times and in pre-presences of things seen and unseen. Yeah, he's keeping us. He's keeping us in, in, the, in the seen and unseen. You see, we can see danger coming sometimes. We can witness danger showing up sometime. We can see people digging ditches for us sometimes. But God, God keeps us in the midst of times that we can't see danger coming. There are people who have died that never saw it coming. There are people who, who are no longer with us that, that never thought it would, they would see this day. But Jesus has a way of blessing us in spite of us. As the songwriter has said, it's because of God's amazing grace that we are who we are. It's because of God's amazing grace that we where we are. It's because of God's amazing grace that we have made, we have made it this far. Because if it had not been for God's grace, the songwriter declares, I don't know where I would be. It's because of God's amazing grace. So Jesus gives his physical body for our spiritual success. Herein we have the substitutionary death. This substitutionary image is painted and grilled in our mind every Sunday, every Wednesday, every Tuesday, whatever your day of worship is. Whenever the preacher reminds you that over 2,000 years ago Jesus gave his life for you, he's telling you that Jesus has become the substitute for you. He physically died. He physically gave his body for you, and he gave it for me. That we will have a spiritual walk with him. The text says in verse number 19, Luke chapter 22, he says, he says, this is my body, which is given for you. He's given his body. He's, he's giving his body for you. He, he died for you. He gave his life for you to have spiritual life. He gave his body for you. He says, do this in remembrance 
of me. Jesus says to every born again Christian this morning, remember him by taking communion. Remember him by taking this body that he broke, he blessed, and he passed it out. Jesus says, as you do this, it shows forth that you're remembering me until I come again. Mm -hmm. All of us want to be remembered for something. All of us want to be remembered for those things which are good. All of us want to be remembered for doing the right thing. Jesus says, in your remembrance, remember me. Don't forget what Jesus has done for you. Don't forget that Jesus has blessed you. Don't forget that Jesus has blessed you regardless of who you are and regardless of what you have done. He has blessed you. You may not have the car you want to drive, but Jesus didn't die for your car. You may not live where you want to live, but Jesus didn't die for you to live in a gated community. You may not be in a family that you want to be in, but Jesus didn't die for you to be connected to a certain group of people. But he did die. He did give his body so that you can be in the family of Jesus Christ, so that you will be a part of the family of God. In Luke chapter 22, verse 19, Jesus says to us today, do this in remembrance of me. Jesus says you ought to do this. You ought to do this on a regular basis. You ought to do this in remembrance of me. That's why today, after our, our, our preaching is over, we're going to have, have virtual communion today. Because we want to do it in remembrance of Jesus Christ. We want to do it so that Jesus Christ will be remembered. Whenever somebody does something good for you, number one, you ought to tell them thank you. Number two, when they do something good for you, number two, you ought to make sure that you remember what they've done for you. Amen. Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. Verse number 20, Luke chapter 22, verse number 20. Luke says, likewise, he also took the cup at the supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Jesus, Jesus not only gives his body, but he gives his blood. I just want to let you know that Jesus gave his blood for you. You see, over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on Calvary. And after he was dead, they pierced him in his side. And when they pierced him in his side, blood ran out for you and for me. This was redemptive blood. Matthew says in Matthew chapter 26, when Jesus is passing out this, this meal, Matthew says in Matthew 26 and 28, Matthew declares that this blood is for the remission of your sins. He says that this blood is for the new covenant. Jesus is ushering in a new covenant. This new covenant is the fact that we don't have to kill dogs and animals anymore. This covenant is the fact that we have salvation through Jesus Christ and through Jesus Christ alone. We don't have salvation through Buddha. We do not have salvation through Confucius. We do not have salvation through Aristotle. We only have salvation through Jesus Christ. This is the new covenant. We don't have to use the scapegoat anymore. Where the priest would take his hand and, and symbolizes the goat running off in the woods with the sin of mankind. Where the priest would lay his hand on a goat. And it was a symbol of all the folk in the nations who have sinned. It was a symbol of their sins being transmitted from them to that scapegoat. You know that ever since we've been doing this, ever, ever since, ever since the scapegoat been on the scene, that's why sometimes when your boss wants somebody to fall down for it and get blamed for it, they use you as the scapegoat. 
Because the scapegoat takes on the troubles, takes on the sin, takes on the responsibility of all mankind. Now we have salvation through Jesus Christ. We don't need another scapegoat. Mm -hmm. He is the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Here is Jesus Christ. He was the one that was slain. He was the substitutionary image right here in the book. And when he gave his body, when he gave his blood, he died for you and he died for me for the remission of our sins. Amen. This word remission means that he died for the forgiveness of our sin. Matthew 26 records this same story. He said it was given for the remission of our sins. It is for the forgiveness of our sins. It is for our liberty. It is for setting us free. It is the same word. We get the word to be set free from prison. Jesus has set us free from the prison of Satan. We no longer have to be what we used to be. We no longer have to do what we used to do. When Jesus died on Calvary, he gave up his life, his body for us. When Jesus died on Calvary, he, he gave up his blood for us. He died, and they laid him in a borrowed tomb. When he died, it was after he died that they pierced him in his side. I know you've heard preachers all over the world preach that, that Jesus, Jesus, Jesus bled, hung, bled, and died. The fact of the matter is, he hung, died, and he bled. The last thing Jesus did before they took him off the cross is that he bled. He bled. He gave up real blood for you. Amen. He gave up the life chain, which is blood for you. Wherever man has no blood, whenever man does not contain blood, he is dead. Jesus gave his life for you, and his blood was shed just for you for the remission of your sin. Jesus says in Luke 22, 19 through 20, he says to us, as often as you do this, you show forth my death and my suffering until I come again. Paul picks this thought up in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Paul says that do this in remembrance of Jesus Christ. During that time, the Corinthian church was coming to church and they were eating the communion, not for spiritual reason, but for physical reason. During this time that when Paul speaks in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, he says, he says, you're coming, to, you're coming to church getting communion and you're feeding yourselves. You are gluttoning. Mm -hmm. Not only are you feeding yourself, you're eating a whole meal. Not only were they feeding themselves, they were getting drunk off the wine from communion. Paul said these things have to stop. These things ought not be. It is not for you to get a meal from communion. It is not for you to eat and get full from communion. Communion is given to us strictly to remember what Jesus has done for us over 2,000 years ago. He died on Calvary. They pierced him in his side and out came blood. And this blood was for remission of our sins. If there's anybody listening to me today, you don't have to continue in sin. You don't have to continue to walk in sin. Jesus is able to forgive you for your sins. And if you have not received Jesus as your personal Savior, Jesus' blood was given for the remission of your sin, for to shut your sins down, to, deliver, to liberate you from your sin, to deliver you from your sin. It is, a, it is the, 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 the remission of sin that makes us who we are, who we are in Jesus the Christ. The text says that Jesus wants us to do this often. And so today we will have communion. And as we have communion, we want to make sure that we always look to Jesus, who's the author and the finish of our faith. We don't eat communion. We don't eat communion to get full. Amen. We don't drink communion in order to get drunk. We don't let little children and grown folk who have not trusted Jesus as their Savior to partake of communion. When we look at the text, you find out that Jesus is talking to those who have trusted him. Jesus is talking to those who are born again. And therein we have communion. We communion, the word communion means that we have fellowship one-on-one -on -one with Jesus Christ. 
It means that Jesus is able to, to intimately get involved in our lives and we're intimately involved with Jesus. That's when we give and we take communion. Jesus paid the price for us through the remission of our sins through his blood. We can only be remitted. We can only, we can only be liberated. We can only be set free from prison through the blood of Jesus Christ. It is Jesus' blood that makes the difference. It is Jesus' blood that was shed over 2,000 years ago on a skull hill called Calvary that sets us free. Amen. He sets us free from the penalty of sin. First of all, he tells us that we no longer have the penalty of sin. We don't have to go to hell. We can be born again right now, right here, even on the airway. He sets us free from the penalty of sin. We don't have to go to hell. We don't have to die and look up and find ourselves in hell. And when we are set free from the penalty of sin, through Jesus Christ, we have salvation. Salvation, salvation alone qualifies us for heaven. Salvation alone qualifies us to go boldly before the Lord with confidence and pray to him and get some answers. So he set us free from the penalty of sin. Secondly, he set us free from, from, he set us free from the power of sin. Yes, he set us free from the power of sin. And then we have sanctification. You see, salvation is a one-time event. Sanctification is an ongoing process. As you commit sin, he sets you away from the power of sin. He sets you free from the power of sin. As you commit sin, you confess your sin, and therein you have sanctification. Yeah, you have sanctification. I'm telling you, all of us need to be sanctified. Some of us don't want to be sanctified because we have a, a skewed view of what sanctification is really all about. But we ought to be sanctified. That means we are set apart. We are different. Other folk are different and we are different. Those who know Jesus Christ are different from the world. We are set apart. So we have salvation through the blood of Jesus. We have sanctification through the blood of Jesus. If it had not been for Jesus' blood, there is no way for us to be saved. There is no way for us to have justification. And because Jesus has imputed in us righteousness. He has given us an opportunity to be righteous. Mm -hmm. He has declared us righteous mm -hmm. through the blood of Jesus. Not only do we have salvation, not only do we have sanctification, we're on our way to have glorification. That means when we leave here, we will have brand new bodies. No more arthritis, no more pain. I told you, Jesus died in physical death so that we will have spiritual lives from now on. You don't have to worry about seeing big mama, grandmama, and everybody else and big papa when you go up there. You just need to know that Jesus has saved you. Yes. Jesus has made a difference in your life. The Bible says, and when we see him, we will be just like him. We will have glorified bodies. It happened over 2,000 years ago. On an old rugged cross. On a skull hill called Calvary. Mm -hmm. Jesus gave his life for you. And he gave his life for me. It was a substitutionary death. It was a, a voluntary death. No man took his life. He gave his life for you. And he gave his life for me. Mm -hmm. He died I tell you. He died on a skull hill called Calvary. And after he died, they pierced him in his side, and out came blood, and this blood was for the remission of our sins. Mm -hmm. After he died, and they took him off the cross, they laid him in a barber tomb. It was a barber tomb because he didn't need it too long. It was a barber tomb because early that third day morning, he got up with all power, everlasting power, all power in heaven and earth in his hand. Jesus rose from the dead early that third day morning, just like he promised he would. He rose from the dead. And those of us who believe the story understand real well that after he rose from the dead, he caught a cloud and left planet earth. He's sitting on the right hand of the Father right now. And when we mess up because we have salvation,
salvation. And when we mess up, we, we cut off the fellowship with God. He is pleading our case on our behalf. He says, Lord, give him another chance. Not give him a second chance, for I messed up my second chance a long time ago. But Lord, give them another chance. I thank God that he keeps giving me another chance. And I have a lively hope today that at the trump of God, Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, I have the lively hope that one of these days, at the trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and those who remain will be caught up with him in midair, and we will forever be with the Lord. He closes that pericope out by saying to us that we ought to comfort one another with these words. Comfort one another with the words that, that Jesus is coming back again. That at the trump of God, Jesus is coming to, to get a church without a spot or a wrinkle. Jesus is coming to get us again. He is coming to make a difference in our lives one more time. Mm -hmm. The dead in Christ shall rise. Jesus knows how to upset a, a graveyard. He's going to upset the graveyard one more time when the dead in Christ rise first. And those of us who remain will be caught up with him in mid -air. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. If you are here today and you've never confessed Jesus as your Lord or your Savior, this is your moment. You can get to know Jesus for yourself. You can get to know who Jesus is all by yourself. The door is open. Distrust the story that Jesus died he was buried in a barber tomb. He rose early that third day morning. He rose for you and he rose for me. The door is open. If you're here today, you need to trust Jesus as your Savior. You can't afford to live here on earth in hell and die and go to hell. You need to trust the story. And the story is very simple that Jesus died for your sins. He was buried in a barber tomb. He rose early that third day morning. The Bible says if you can believe this story, you will be saved. Yeah. Right here, right now on the air. Without us gathering in church, you can be born again. You see, you don't need people to be saved. You don't need people to be born again. You don't need people to qualify yourself for heaven. But what you do need is Jesus the Christ. He is the one that makes a difference in your life. And if you're here today and, and you will make a commitment to Jesus Christ, inbox me and let me know that you made, you made a commitment to Jesus. I want you to join me in prayer. And if I've described you today and you need Jesus, and you've never trusted him as your savior. I want you to repeat after me in prayer. And invite Jesus into your life. Just this short prayer. And all you're going to do is tell Jesus that you believe the story. The story that over 2,000 years ago he died for you. The story that Jesus Christ died for you. And was buried in a borrowed tomb. Early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. And you got to trust this story to get you to heaven. Just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. I believe that you were seen after you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. If you're here today and you prayed that prayer and invited Jesus into your life, you need to 
let me know that you've done that. Inbox me and let me know whether you're on Facebook Live or on Zoom. Let us know that you trusted Jesus as your personal Savior. And if there are those of you who, who just need prayer, who struggle with sin like I do, who struggle with sin like your family members who are in church do, you need to trust Jesus. Trust him to get you through times like these. And if there are some of you who are, who are listening to me that don't have a church home, or some of you who are in between church homes, I recommend this one, the New Beginning Church, where Jesus is the center of attention and Jesus is the main attraction. Inbox me and let me know that you want to be a part of this church. Let me know that you want to be a part of this church in such a way that we can be family members in the family of Christ. The invitation is extended. The door of the church is open. This is your moment. You can get to know him just as you are. I hear you. Don't, don't worry about people. Don't let in, imperfect people keep you away from a perfect God. The door is open. Will you come? It's through God's amazing grace that we are who we are. And God has made we, us who we are. For he has imputed in us righteousness. Not our own righteousness. But the righteousness of God. This is your invitation. Father God, we thank you for those who have come. Those who have committed to you. We pray that you bless them in time like these. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Just before we receive our offering, this is first Sunday and we use to celebrate Jesus Christ and what he has done for us through communion and we will take communion today and we will have communion from a virtual standpoint. And so get your crackers, get your drink and we will partake of communion together. We will partake of communion together as we come today to thank God for what God has already done and how Jesus died for us. The Bible says in Luke 22, 19 through 20 that Jesus took the bread. He blessed it. He broke it. He passed it out to his disciples. And I say to you today, if you or one of his disciples, you can join us in taking communion. If you've been saved, you've been born again, if you trust Jesus as your Savior, believing the simple story, you can partake with us in communion today. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you now for this privilege of communing with you. We take this bread and this drink. We ask your blessings upon it. The bread and the drink of all those who are listening to us. We pray that you bless in the name of Jesus. This is our substitutionary image of your body and your blood. Lord, I pray that you bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible said Jesus took the bread. He blessed it. He passed it out. And the text says, he says, eat thee all of it. And he took the cup. And he said, this is the cup of my blood that I shed for you for the remission of your sin. 
drink eat all of it amen amen and thank god the bible says they saw the song and they went out thank you for joining us on our live broadcast thank you for joining us in our communion and now it is offering time. Hallelujah. It is time to give unto the Lord. It is time to give to the Lord Jesus the Christ. It is time to give to the Lord. It is offering time. It is offering time. It is time to give to the Lord. You can give to the New Beginning Church in two ways. You can mail your checks to the New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. For those of you who are members of the New Beginning Church, thank you for mailing in your tithes and your offering. For those of you who have not been mailing in your tithes and offering, please begin to do so and remember that this is our command from God to give tithes and offering unto the Lord. And for those of you who have been giving tithes and offering by way of our cash app, our cash app is still available. Our cash tag is NBC Souls. NBC Souls is our cash tag. Come and join us as we continue to walk with the Lord. Give unto the Lord. The first 10% belongs to God and is holy before him. Then we ought to always give God an offering of appreciation. We'll be right here again on Wednesday night at 7.20 p.m. for our Bible study. Please join us at 7.20 p.m. for our Wednesday night Bible study. We will be right back on Zoom and Facebook Live. Wednesday night. Also on Sunday, we have our Sunday school classes live for our adults. Our youth and our young people are doing their our Sunday school classes by cahoots. And so please join us at 9 a.m. on Sunday morning for our morning Sunday school class. This same place, Facebook Live. Thank you for joining us today, and we will be back here every Sunday at 1045 for our worship service here at the New Beginning Church from our remote location until God deems it safe to meet back at the church building. Amen. Thank you much. Thank you for joining us. Please continue to follow us and join us on Facebook Live as well as Zoom, and we will be glad to be a part of your life as you are a part of the life that we serve in Jesus of Christ. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. We thank you for blessing us and keeping us. We thank you for the commitment that we have in Jesus the Christ. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us to to walk with you. We thank for thank you for the substitutionary death that Jesus has given for all of us. We ask you to bless us, Father God, as we go through COVID-19 waters, as we go through danger seen and unseen. We pray that you continue to watch over us and bless us. Bless our visitors. Bless our members. Bless that no harm will come near their dwelling places. Bless us, Father God, as we go in and out, that we will make wise decisions. And we will make those decisions for ourselves. Bless our church to continue to be a beacon light in a cold, dark, and dismal world. Bless us to continue to unite the church, strengthen families, support schools, and empower neighborhoods. Now to him who is able to keep us from falling, him the only wise and only true God, 
be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us all say, Amen. amen. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.